Connors T, how are you? Welcome to the Candle of Tales podcast. I am joined by my sister and Ruo Shea. So my name is Aaron and of course we are talking about the uh, latest episode of the Candle of Tales podcast and I'm going to start talking so Sorica and Ruo can introduce themselves. Go ahead lads. <laughs> Hi I'm Ruo, what's the crack? <laughs> Over to you Sorica. Hello I'm Sorica, how are you? Uh, this is strange. We don't, do we always do we do this usually? I feel like we don't do this usually. I feel but like anyway. this is a curveball, but like I, I, I think it was we managed it gracefully. Like you know, I thought you did great, beautifully, so did great. Uh, mm. It was really nice. No, um, well, you know, it, it's it was always going to be a slight bit of a curveball because we've been taking a bit of a break. We did a lot of these post show chats together in one run, and then suddenly we have this one to do and. Uh, because there's three of us now and not two, uh, it, it just messes up the, hey, I'm Sarika, I'm Aaron, now we do the thing, tell us the story, oh no, there's another person. Anyway, we probably could have sorted this out beforehand. Sorry about that, <laughs> that's my fault <laughs> for doing a shite intro. But nevertheless, we're talking about a fucking awesome story, so it's great, it's grand, it's all going to be good. And today we're going to be talking a lot more about the music of this series and this podcast, because Rory, you've been doing the music for the entire series in the last few series is it CRI? Yeah, it's C-R-I? been nearly a year now. Mm. Um, it's going on a year. It's going on a year. Um, and I guess if you're looking at our YouTube video, you'll see Rue with his eclectic uh, set on, of instruments hung up on the wall behind him. And, uh, These are all the ones I could fit into the frame. <laughs> <laughs> of, course, of course. Just trying to make myself look cool. You know, there's a new PA system there too. Just saying. It does look very cool in fairness. It looks it cool. There look are many, cool. more. many there, more. There's, there's a great collection. And you've also not put in any of the gongs, which are also... The no, ones. those are over there. They definitely don't fit in the frame. That, <laughs> that, that needs its own camera. <laughs> yeah, we'll get that it's the largest item I own. Like... <sighs> Uh, um, so yeah, I mean, can how would you start this chat off with, with a bit of um, you telling us about what this series has kind of, you know, had for you mm-hmm. in terms of workload, but also in terms of theme, how you managed, how you decided to work with the music? Because I know you've always kind of tried to uh, hit a, a certain an episode or a series with a kind of a different vibe. Uh, so can you kind of talk as an overview of what you've been thinking with this series? For sure, music? yeah, yeah, for sure. We we tried to, like myself and Oshin, we try we tried to have a consistent theme going on or like, you know, just a consistent, a consistent sound going on for any given series. So like we've I've been rolling with something like that for for the entirety of this series, whereby it's all in the same key. It's all using the same instrumentation, guitar and piano, and then a bit of kind of MIDI, whatever, and sound design behind that. But like uh, certainly aiming to have a consistent sort of sound using the same kind of instrumentation and all. So like that's that's there throughout the series. Um, and uh, probably the main thing that's that that's happened my end with this series is that like halfway through it, the good people of Patreon, uh, the Candle of Tales yeah. Patreon, bought me a brand new laptop. Thanks, uh, Patreon so, and people. Thank you. <laughs> but just like immense gratitude forever on that one but like it's that's just opened doors for me man like it's it's so good you know like I, I i was i was working with an ailing old thing that would just you know shit the bed whenever i when it whenever it was asked to do anything uh to to go into like working on a high spec deadly thing with the newest uh, version of ableton the sound editing mm-hmm. software uh yeah i can just do more stuff now and do things like quickly and efficiently to class <laughs> nice, nice. Right. i mean like that that for me it's still another world like it's funny sure. we 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 talk about this often uh this storytelling company is something that is about the stories and fundamentally about the psychology the archetypes of it the age old wisdoms that go past that and like oftentimes i like, i need the music to tell a story oftentimes i say that a lot Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I noticed when I fucking don't have it and like you were there on the second night ever of performing with Candid Tales because I couldn't fucking bear another empty 
barren sound sure, behind yeah, me. I couldn't yeah, just yeah. hear the echo of my own voice reverberate around the room. Sure, your own skull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Aaron, <laughs> terrifying. Aaron, no function music well without. No, no, no. Do you want me to grab something there for right now? Yeah. Or like, yeah, you know what? I've gotten a bit Maybe that more intro would have been better it. if I grabbed the guitar. The guitar. You know? It would have been. It would have been. It probably would have been. <laughs> but, yeah, but it would also still be going. Is the only yeah, that's the only problem. <laughs> that's the only thing. And I'd be there going through the intros with the music flowing uh, yeah, and, yeah. and sound. Yeah, I can already see it. Um, a mythic intro. I... But so mm. I, I guess I, I take a lot for granted when I when I consider uh, the, the talent uh, and the musicality of what you guys bring to kind of tales in all of the variations and people who have come along and, and helped us out with the music over the years but then especially in terms of putting down the music for a podcast because it's so different to life obviously yeah. and then and with- I love the difference I've grown to really love that difference it's like with the podcast you 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 have the luxury of like La- like landing things in in a, in a manner that's completely on point with the words like that's what i'm trying to do with the with the music to like completely just like reflect the tone and reflect the whatever what's happening like almost word by word you know and like w- live that can, that that can that lands if it lands great it lands great if it doesn't it doesn't like but like with this i can do various takes you know i can make things just super on point and just like embrace the fact that it's that this isn't a live medium you know Nice. Um, I've grown to really like that. Yeah, it's interesting that 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 is the way because, like, I guess when Sarika, you tell a story to the podcast, we talk about this—the difference between like telling a story live and then telling it to like a microphone and mm-hmm. how difficult that is. Uh, but I can only imagine how hard it is to to take the the un the unmusicalized version of what our story is with us ah, kind of going. I, yeah i i i would i i find it super easy because music is so inherent into storytelling and like your own your own storytelling styles you, you both have quite different styles but they're both completely laced with musicality like you, you're both very rhythmic and there's it, it, there, there's groove in there you know groove there's groove and tempo shifts that change all the time and like the tonality of it all is just all completely Im- imbued within the words so like mm. it like it, like they're there i'm i'm given a musical thing to 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 add more music to do you know what i mean like it's 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 a lovely starting point and like there's i i i, I find there to be really easy flow with it like is there you, you give me something musical to add music to you know what i mean interesting interesting and nice. uh, yeah because like i i, I yeah it's funny when, when you say that because i know i certainly have something kind of like driving through the story that i'm telling it and then i guess like and that comes that comes true in in your language. That comes true in the mm-hmm. the pace that you speak the words. And like when when I'm sitting at home using this like non live medium, I, I my aim is to match that with all the dips and fo- flows that come with it. You know what I mean? All mm-hmm. the changes in the tone, all the changes in the pace. Like it's all there, and it's all it's all groovy, baby. <laughs> you know? and, and then and then what I guess like has helped in terms of being able to upskill and us being able to invest in mm. you as one of our co-creators and being able to spend the, the money that Patreon is giving us to invest in the quality of this podcast and, and the ability of the stuff that we're able to put out. And I pretty, you can track it like from our early podcast to know how it's incrementally, like just the sound of everything has gotten better with not just new microphones, mm-hmm. but also the, the new tech that you're learning to use and add mm. to stuff. And like then layering in the sound effects, the foliar, the the mm-hmm. kind of the atmos, the rain, the water, yeah. uh, to make it really feel authentic. And that definitely oh, came from last podcast. Yeah, yeah, I love. It. Well, with the whole invasion series, there's been a lot of kind of like elemental forces, particularly mm. the ocean. Like, it, like it's mm. a whole motif in it. Everybody comes from overseas and lands in Ireland and does their invasion or whatever. And I don't think there has been a single episode that hasn't had the sound of like ocean swell going on it, which is totally my favorite sound of all the drum yes. in there. And <laughs> like, um, and like those elemental forces. Like, there's been we've we've had a few good like magical storms because the two a day Danon are into being like tricky fuckers who conjure up <laughs> magical storms to throw at their enemies there was one in the island of Eru and uh I, and I love that too because you just it's you, you're springing in separate tracks of like a track of wind a track of rain a track of like ocean swell and you can just like craft it all together in such a way that it like 
rises with the tempo of what's going on and then it dissipates when the storm goes and that's a lot of fun to play around with and interestingly so like i um been you know falling asleep to some of your uh music without the the, the stories which you've mm. very generously put up and managed to you know get the fucking time well, i can do that now that i can do that now that i've got the laptop you know i couldn't make videos on my old laptop but like uh yeah no, so, so what aaron's talking about is the musical scores are going out that we pre-released them on patreon first for the patrons and then a week later they go out on youtube um yeah. it's just the, the musical score just without the without the storytelling element I, and um, it's actually there i didn't think that there was a, a comment on the um uh the second battle of Moitura hauntingly beautiful right. and it it is actually kind of haunting it's kind of like it's both relaxing and calming yeah. and there's a kind of foreboding kind of more yeah i mean haunting. like li- listening to the the music without the context of the storytelling like all those all those shifts in tone are still happening so like you'll, yes. you'll go from something that's quite pleasant and relaxing to all like like when 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 something uncomfortable and something or like a signifier of something evil or bad comes into the storytelling i'll generally bring in for the for the for for this story or for this series i've been using the sound of it's uh, it's it's like an evil cello kind of like high tension atonal cello strings and so like you'll you'll get all that kind of coming in and like you know just to make you feel on un- like it's literally to make the listener feel uncomfortable you know so yeah. um so, so like yeah I, I guess without the without without the context of of the storytelling being there on top of it you're you're, you're just getting some creepy ass music you know yeah yeah i mean it's interesting to, well you certainly it's evocative it's yeah. certainly evocative no matter what and it's it's beautiful to be able to actually separate them and just have yeah. that as something uh, mm-hmm. that's up there so um no i've been i've been loving hearing more of the music because sometimes when certainly when i'm telling a story mm-hmm. the music kind of i i, I don't know about you sorry but I, I i find it hard to even like hear it you know what i mean in the same way that i don't remember anything i ever say <laughs> uh i don't remember the music that's happening while i'm telling a story mm-hmm. so <laughs> definitely and it's 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 not that i don't know there's something interesting going on there because it's not that you're like it's not that you're not paying attention to it. You're very much paying attention to it, but mm-hmm. you're kind of so in it that you're not observing it enough to remember it. So like right, the yeah. recorder bit of your brain is not on when you're on stage because it's all broadcast bit and you're not actually, I d- speaking personally anyway, I don't retain any of that stuff. I've had, people, I've had people come up to me after gigs and and compliment me but and like it's it's a weird compliment to give but say the but, but but by saying that like I don't remember the music you know it was it, it, yes. and you know and like they mean it in a complimentary sense it, it, in in that it like it was so part of the buzz and the flow of things that that, yes. that you forget it's happening and like if you can achieve that then that then you've really landed the music that like that's a night when the, yeah. when the music has been completely on point with the the dips and falls of the storytelling so yes, much that it's, that been it's just so part of the seamless. atmosphere that and, and and like it's it like it's supposed to be a supporting thing it's not supposed to be front and center so like yeah. it, it's you know, a weird effect that can happen i funnily enough was watching a marriage story that film that won a couple last yeah year, adam and driver and yeah. randy newman did the music score and it got nominated for right. an oscar yeah and i watched it and i i was looking up like oscar the, the oscar winners and then i saw on the credits randy newman i was like randy newman sound score was there music in that? Like, I literally yeah. didn't hear anything. I was like, same so thing. engrossed in the thing. You yeah. know, it's, it's that same thing. thing. Like, yeah, yeah. Wait, what? I was engrossed that's a, in the story. That's a really, really good score. Whereas yeah. if you're if you're noticing the music in a film, yeah. somebody's trying to be fucking clever. You yeah, know, somebody's I, doing I, too much. I think the trend Sometimes, has yeah. been has been increasingly towards like that subtlety in soundtrack uh, in yeah. in recent film. Like if you look back at a Hot, uh, Hitchcock film back in the day, like the scores are incredible. But by God, they like they they are they are they're prominent and front and center in mm. your mind, and you remember the strings in the sa- the mm. shower scene in Psycho and stuff like this. Yeah, and like they're big or- orchestral sc- scores, and like they demand your attention. But like mm-hmm. if you move to the present day and the likes of Hans Zimmer, like he's he's like modern day like film genius genius composer and his stuff is super subtle and super mm. kind of like soundscapey rather than like big and booming and groovy and like grabbing your attention yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And again, it's, yeah. It's well i guess distracts. it's a stylistic it's a stylistic choice i think like anything like if you're if you're paying attention to if you're paying attention to the costumes or the music or the landscape or, it's, or the cinematography it's either very bad or very good 
Yeah, yeah. sure. Like, yeah. and and it's it's good in a style that is like trying to be assertive and there and yeah. in the, in the middle of it. You know, it's one of the cop outs of like, um, did you did you enjoy that film? Oh, the the was shot beautifully. The, uh, gorgeous. the thing you say to your mate when they've been in a film with a really shit script and yeah. you're just like eh, yeah buddy. sidestepping the script of oh that, that one thing that was okay about it was great yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> or focusing on details but like when things come together as a whole and work together yeah. in a complementary fashion and i guess that's what we're aiming for let's not well our, I, our yeah and so i much. i think it's also <laughs> um, the kind yeah. of thing of like if everything is strong and everything is complementary it's actually a little bit harder to say what you liked about the thing. Cause you're mm. like, cause I often find that in a film that I really enjoy, I'll find it difficult to pick a thing that I liked. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm like, Oh, I loved that. What did you love about it? All of it. Reaction. it. Well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> All it's, of it. it's, it's kind of bypassed <laughs> your cognition and gone straight into your heart. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like that, that it's, it's less easy to, to describe and you're not going to start going on about, Oh, well, the cinematography was fantastic. You, like, exactly. You, you, like, something's really gotten into your heart and moved where, in and, and kind of blown you away. If I'm like, Oh, that, that one performance and it was good. Yeah. Usually that means, Hmm. The performance was good. Probably if I noticed that there was something about the story that wasn't, I, I was aware that it was a performance. Or there was a, di or there was a performance that wasn't or there was, as good. Yeah, or, it, was or it was better than the other performances and therefore made me aware that I was watching a yeah, film. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, sure, and I like, think there's all those kinds of things that happen then when you're like, mm, yeah, no, that was, yeah, there was, yeah. there was good things about it, but it also was actively pulling me out of being immersed. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of, that's always been, what we were talking about with the music is in, in Candlelit Tales is like it keeps, you know, in a live audience, it keeps the live audience focused in and it also keeps us as storytellers focused in and it keeps everybody in this little bubble of sound that you guys are creating while so that we can tell them a story. And if there's noise outside or if there's something going on downstairs or if there's another fucking gig in the next room or if there's traffic on the street they're not paying attention to that that's not intruding because we've got this little bubble mm -hmm. that's just yeah. like all of us in there like yeah. in that one groove which is and a very cool there's thing. something about having like the, there must be something about having the linguistic kind of center like activated by hearing words and information but also just the auditory senses and the, the rhythm of music that's kind of like you, your heartbeat that's that's moving yes. through you and like because we're you know fucking filled with mostly water we're also reverberating with yeah, it you know like sure, there's yeah. something that's actually like you know going along with it i think we're just a lot more susceptible to the whole kind of enormous effect that a music will have our kind of mu music kind of orchestral score or whatever it is will have on us mm -hmm. um, and bring us to an emotional area or pitch and um, that yes. then opens us up to maybe receive uh, that information and be better certainly for me as a kind of a scattered mind minded human being yeah i i need something to help me focus in on something and oh, I, yeah. that, that turns down the sound of my own background thoughts and my own you know and i guess it's it's other people you know might say oh, for sure man like it's it's across the board i mean like that's why that's why films have soundtracks that's why or you yeah. know it's why media has soundtracks it it, it, mm -hmm. it does that it, it just it just takes the source material and amplifies what it's doing to 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 reach that kind of higher level i guess sure. um so in terms of this last podcast i i thought like i love i love listening to a podcast where uh, i get a voice note from sorica explaining her i was in i was in new Zealand and she messed me this like i it was what is it, a nine minute long message i sent you a big long waffly message so trying to work it out in my head message. and i was like all right this I need a sounding board. <laughs> yeah. I'm tempted to put it at the end of this episode. Like I genuinely am. It was fucking great <laughs> because like, but it was just this, like, hang on a second. I'm just going to talk this through. Um, I'm not really sure. There was this thing about it. It kind of annoyed me, but I had to think about it. And now I think I know it. And I don't quite know, but it did, hang on, listen to me for a second. And you just had this like one way conversation. I was like, because I said I'd arrange to talk to you about it. And we'd, we'd um, I never you did. Flaked. I flaked. <laughs> and then so you're like, okay, so here, I'm just going to talk at you. I'll talk it. at you. Grand. Which is as You're... much as it was going to do anyway. Yeah. I didn't. <laughs> I'm not sure I entirely required your input on that one. It was just very like. Evidently, you didn't. 
Um, sometimes we can over and back stuff and it'll be very good. We, but, usually um, we do, but I feel like this was one where I was like, I was also kind of, as you know, as you were saying, we kind of, this is this is one that, uh, you know, we were kind of rushing to get things done before you went to, to Germany and rushing to get post shows done and trying to get everything done. Out. And this was the one that I hadn't finished recording. And like, we'd done the stories, we'd moved into post-show recording mode and I had, to, I had a story that I hadn't done, which for me makes it difficult to then go back. It's a bit like everything else that I do. If, I, if, I, if I'm on one thing, I'll do the one thing. And then when that's right. m- mostly done, I move on to the next thing. And then it's really hard to go back to the first thing again because I feel like I've finished that. Uh, so that's that's you know as you both know if ever you're like Sarika could you re-record a line I'm always like no <laughs> no this is the worst thing that anyone's ever done to anyone in the history of humanity um, it just you know it's terrible so I I I had to go back to story mode and get and and also then actually research this story a bit more because it's not one that I've actually told very many times right. uh, it's one that we've kind of alluded to and I alluded to it when we did the goddess stories in, in February um, and it's one that we've done once or twice live um, yeah. and we've done it in the context of talking about Mananon McLear I think because one of the versions of the ending is that he shakes his cloak between the two of the Danon and the sons of Mill and that's what actually creates the other world because mm-hmm. his magic cloak means that you can never meet that person again. And so because it's a whole people, it, it's it splinters it splits, kind yeah. of reality mm-hmm. in, a, in a way that is very cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, it was it was one that I kind of had to put my head into uh, with vigor. <laughs> yeah, no, I I. I... I so appreciated listening to that and then having a chance to listen to the, the, the episode. Again, like, I, I feel like I'm just, in, I can get to enjoy these stories so much more when I, you know, I'm in part of them sometimes at all. And yeah. from uh, the build up and, and like, this is this is what's so funny about this series, especially because we've, you know, been very together in some of the episodes and then completely separated in the, in the others. And I get to kind of enjoy them as a, almost a mm. hunter would. Um, yes. And then t- to appreciate what you've done musically with it, Rue, as well, and go, oh, oh, cool. He's gone very... And for this, you kind of decided to go a bit more atmospheric with it, or, I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, like the ending just kind of... Again, it was that elemental forces thing, the whole, the, like, the, the magical storm happens while the lads are waiting out and they're both in the ocean. So, like, it, like, if, if, if just, like, the story just very much went that way and I had mm. fun with that. Yeah. Nice, nice. Love a good storm. <laughs> Love a good storm, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, 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 when I was, I was listening to this, I was kind of laughing to myself. I was walking around and I was like, God, I'd love to, I can't wait to go back home. Like I'm in, still in Berlin and I'm like, oh, I can't wait to go back home and, and see Ireland. It sounds so great. Oh, wow. Yeah, it is beautiful. The rolling hills, the white landscape, the cliffs. Yeah. The... Hang on a second. She's tricking me into coming back. Yeah. <laughs> She's tricking me into thinking Ireland's fucking great. Like this, this podcast should have been sponsored by Tourism Ireland. It's so yeah. good. Like it'll go, <laughs> I, 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 there'll be flocks of people coming back to Ireland going, where are these beautiful landscapes? What the fuck is going on with the weather? Everything she didn't say with the weather. <laughs> well, she did talk about the state though. I mean, like, like you've got this beautiful land run by this absolutely corrupt government in the story, just saying. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, that obviously never happened again yeah yeah <laughs> but but i mean like yeah at the same time uh it was it was beautiful to go into its perspective mm-hmm. and see the land from a fresh yeah. pair of eyes again and like to kind of experience it almost from memory because i know Ireland so well as a, imagining to see this if you came from a barren landscape a place that was infertile a place that didn't have the 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 wide open spaces you know like it was just like oh wow that would, that would be so uh, such a fertile land mm-hmm. as well mm-hmm. so that kind of resonated quite beautifully and then like i also thought you know uh, thank god for our patreon supporters who, who actually sponsor us because 
but you know should should yeah. have gotten Tur- tourism ireland didn't give us any money for this but you know they can if they want to they if they're listening money. We are, we would be, we would be okay with that. But if you're listening and you haven't given us any Patreon money, you can also do that by going to patreon.com forward slash candle tales. It's a nice segue. Segue. <laughs> While we're plugging the shit out of Patreon, can I just mention, I've been doing a, a little series on how the music is made for, for each episode. Just yeah. that's, it's exclusively for the Patreon supporters and doesn't go out into the wilds otherwise. Really? Um, I'm having a lot of fun with that. And it's there I'm exclusively on Patreon. If you, if you feel like joining. That. Exclusive content. And early releases yeah we do early releases too. helping us you know afford being broadcast artists mm-hmm. whoop whoop um so anyway back to uh the story this is one of those ones sorry okay, that could have been a very long ass story like well, this could have been a half an hour one i mean listen i mentioned at one point that they set off in this fleet with 40 chiefs in it right and i'm i don't know if you know this but there's a there's a text that i found that names every single one of the 40 chiefs which is kind of like this is one of the things about irish history and irish storytelling and like irish kind of the the shana key tradition that i'm like i really am sort of in awe of it sometimes because this was how people kept records but because this was a this was you know this stuff was written down by the christians but in the pre-christian era in ireland you needed to know the name of the 40 chiefs because you, that was your documentation for who everybody was and who everybody was related to and, and what their lineage was. And like, that was an important job was the person who remembered that list of 40 names and all of the hundreds of other lists of names that you have. And like of like people often ask us how how we remember stories and actually stories are not hard to remember because stories are a sequence of events. Lists are a bitch to remember lists are fucking hard because you don't have anything to tie those names onto it's just so and so and so and so and so and so so i i just fully was like this is not going to be fun to listen to we have writing now it's fine i'm just gonna i'm just gonna say Araman and Eberdon and somebody else and skip the rest and like yeah, yeah. just just let it let it be because it's it's um it served a function um, right. then it doesn't really need to serve anymore I don't think right. um, so yeah there was those kinds of things and then there's also the fact that and this was something that I hadn't really clocked before which is that Amergen sings twice and the song of Amergen is the song that he sings when he steps onto the shore of Ireland and it's usually the one that we've told and it's the one that I usually hear told is when he kind of says, I am, I am you know, the... I am the wave, I am the shore, I am the eagle, I am the hawk, I am the leaf, I am the grass. And he kind of talks himself into Ireland and he talks Ireland into accepting him. And but I love that one. I've, that's so I, romantic. It's and it's the only the one I've mostly seen, in fact. And, and it's like this really kind of prophetic, kind of beautiful oneness. And it seems to be the only thing that kind of seems to be I other than and greater than the eye of the person and yeah and it's like this really transcendental moment in mythology where you don't it's always get it it's very a, cool and then it was when I was reading the 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 source for this that I was like oh my god this other thing that he says to sing down the storm is mm. fucking amazing and it has this really cool rhythm to it yeah which it's super groovy I, I I love I love that in in the story, and I'm I'm so glad that you didn't like subsequently go on to to like do any battley stuff afterwards or anything because that was the apex of that story, and uh, and I, I'm I'm glad it got that that that, that yeah. honor. Do you know what I mean? Like it 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 could only kind of like drift down from there with the storm yeah. going, and it's like a bit of storytelling too. Some say this, some say that, but like that was the high point of the story. It was gorgeous. I it was such a cool thing, and like again, I truncated it a little bit because it it starts to get but like the the structure of it mm. and i think that's something that i really loved about it was because usually with those old verses we get them in translation and the translation is kind of clunky so like a lot of the rhythm and a lot of the beauty and any of the rhymes or word plays were missing but the fact that this relied on repetition as its kind of structure just made it so that even though it was in translation it still worked and mm. i was like oh fuck me that's cool if that's, that's really an example cool. of the kind of writing 
that is in old Irish that we'd only get through translation. Like that's that's what the that's the standard. That's mm-hmm. fucking class. Yeah. And and like yeah, I loved it. So I so I like I picked that over the song of Amergan because I had the same instinct as you, Rue, which yeah. is like there's gonna be one, there's gonna be one high bit. Point. There's yeah. gonna be one high point. It like having two or three high points, you get into the ending of the Lord of the Rings, and it's like, come on. Mm-hmm. Just fucking get on the boat, Frodo. We're done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sail away. Um, so, so I was like, okay, yeah, this I'm, I'm do. I pick this one. I choose this one. This one I haven't mm. heard before. This one is fucking lit. And also, this one lets us do the thing that we've been trying really hard to hold off doing all series, which is name the island. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, we've been we had to have a few edits because Sorica came up with a great idea at the start of the. I don't know if you're actually aware of this, Rue, um, that we wouldn't name Ireland, Ireland. We'd name it the island, the, the land, the place, the land the of gaff, destiny, home. Mm-hmm. The, you know, your, your man's gaff, whatever it was, we weren't <laughs> calling <laughs> it <laughs> fucking <laughs> Ireland. And the number of times that like, I, 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 I had to go back and re- like, edit out a line and go fuck is it ardent yeah um, same uh and it, because like we, we we like we were good for like the first three episodes and then we did the first battle of moitura and you were like you said ardent like twice there i was like damn it <laughs> <laughs> and then the second half battle of moitura came happened again because i kept on forgetting that we decided to do that it was uh, if it was a normal length of a series you would have been fine but like well, i think we've been doing this possibly since march or we, it, it's see- not march april what what also extended this series a lot was that like a, about halfway through it, we went from being twice a week to being once a week. Mm-hmm. And so it suddenly doubled in length as a series. And it was like, oh, this is now no longer, this is going to be like another two months instead of another month, mm-hmm. which is why we did it because we, we realized that we, you know, out of lockdown, we don't have the time to do. We needed the time, yeah. We needed, we oh, needed extra time. We have jobs um, now. That aren't yeah. this kind of the tales. Um, yeah, yeah I, could, I could not be doing one podcast a week anymore, yeah. man. Not a fear of it. That was yeah. a no. lockdown specific possibility. And it was Absolutely. great to have. And we were we were lucky to have like the kind of the interest, the support, the people like reaching out to us and talking to us about it and and the kind of the, adding the value for the work that we're putting in that felt like actual, you know, and uh, not just praise, but like a good exchange of a karmic resolve in a way, you know, mm-hmm. um, and, 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 and motivation to fucking like sometimes you need, need to, to, to get up in the morning. But like, uh, you know, and that's a genuine fucking fear sometimes when they have, there's nothing else on the plate. But I guess like mm-hmm. then all of a sudden out of lockdown, more work happening, more life happening, it's busier, busier, busier. And like the time and effort, and I guess when we've put the standard up and up and up and keep on pushing it ourselves to make it higher and better and more quality, then suddenly we're like, we can't drop it down, but we can't reduce the hours, but we don't have many hours. We should probably, yeah, go to one podcast a week. And it's worked out really well, I think, in fairness. Um, I don't think too many people have been too upset, um, but you know, it's, or I I don't know. I don't know, to be honest. (laughs) Um, I think weekly is still pretty good. There's a lot of podcasts that are like sure. every other week. And I'm like, yeah, weekly is still all right. Yeah, um, no, we I think we were initially on an every other week schedule, but we did the chat and the story at the same time. So that's how our early episodes go. And then it was like twice a week for a lot of a lot of uh, 2020 and, and now back down to once a week, which is, yeah, that works. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm really glad to hear uh, how you how you came around to that that Amergan, uh, decision though coming back to the story because um, it was it was one of the things you talked about in that voice note to me was why you didn't want to just go with the I am the because there sometimes is a, a misunderstanding perhaps or or um, not necessarily necessarily misunderstanding. But does Amerigan get put on a higher stool than is uh, necessarily uh, deserved of this of this song? Was he really the shaman? Was he really kind of saying, "I am, I am everything. I am all." I, I, what is the meaning behind the "I am" song? And the there, there's a clear message in maybe the second one that you picked, which yeah. is kind of an allowing and asking for Ireland to, well, to I- accept them. To be honest, I also thought that it it fitted more with 
this story and this series because this right. was the island of Eru and this was the island like this was the this was the 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 climactic moment of this story is the naming of the island and because we've held off on naming the island for the whole series that felt like it had enough <laughs> weight that I could kind of make it a thing mm-hmm. and make it be like a a moment of consequence because he calls like he names the island he names the island Aaron he's the first one to call it Aaron which is which is what the island of Eru means um and yeah. like and of course Ireland is just an anglicization of of the word Aaron it's the same word um with a slightly different pronunciation and spelling like mm-hmm. it's the same word so like that that to me felt consequential and and so this was for this version of this story it was the more important moment was to have him invoke the island rather than invoke himself into the island and it, and it's a very again land centric versus human centric yeah. and that that really fits with what this invasion cycle is all about and like don't get me wrong i love the the other um the other song and mm. for one of our open mic nights uh marilena uh whose tech name is completely gone for me she was one of our previous students on the, on the storytelling course we had an open mic night and she told a story and blew me out of the water with it because she fucking like embodied that whole i am thing she had tears welling in her eyes i had tears in my eyes like it was fucking powerful and yeah. and she but well, she made that choice to like you know, have Amergan feel so raw that he had to put everything of himself inside this spell to bring him to the place of prosperity, to, to help him and his people survive this battle in the storm, before the battle rather. And like, it, it, it was huge in, in that moment. And it worked and it worked. It's a dealer's mm. choice, I guess. And, and it's like, if totally. this story is so, like so fit, fitry and a bitty and there's well, strings like- to it. You know, it takes quite a lot to condense it into something that is has that arc and punch. And then yeah. I thought you just, yeah, chose and, well. And it's, it's you know, it, the fact that I chose this one of Amergan's songs doesn't mean that I will always. The next you time, know what I mean? Sure. Like, because it, it's it's also about what is the story that you're telling today? Mm. What What is the series that it's sitting into? What is the mood today? What is the crowd? Like, this is all the kind of things that like, you know, we often talk about this idea of like, there's a there's a real freedom in the fact that these stories are not definitive and like nobody's done a definitive version of them and nobody could because as soon as you do a definitive version, there's another version. Um, and and I like that about them. I like that there's there's five different versions of every story. And I like that, you know, the story that, that kind of collates all of the five different versions is kind of untellable because it goes on for fucking 28 20 20 hours you know like that's that's one of the good things that's one of the great things about irish mythology because it means you have the freedom to do that and you don't ever have to land on this is the story of the island of eru because also you know that was the title we gave this the title of this story is the sons of mill we renamed it the island of Eru because mm-hmm. that's the bit of it that we were interested in. And that bit about Eru shape-shifting into a crow was also in the source that I found. And I was like, that's so cool. Because oh, I've always thought of her like, you know, the three goddesses. And, and I think we're kind of um, getting onto that anyway. Like the three goddesses to me, I've always kind of, I think it was it was when we were working with the girls in in direct provision for for this land that we first started giving them a like distinct personalities. Mimi, Trish like, and Tracy, absolutely, yeah, 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 was, yeah. Was yeah. that was the distinct um, personalities thing a Candle of Tales invention? Because I often don't know. <sighs> yeah, kind of, yeah, like, or an amplification. Well, to well, be honest, I thought it was, and then I read this thing about Eru being the one who was shape shifting into a crow, and I was like, did we like did we? Do we do that? We like it. Sometimes wasn't, I forget I the wood from the trees because I don't, we yeah. read a source and then <laughs> See, like, I don't know the wood from stuff. the trees because Candle Tales is my primary like source of mythological yeah. information. So I kind of just like roll with what you guys say. And we, I don't know when you're making it up. <laughs> neither yeah, do we like, half the time. I, I, that's, the, think, that's the trick. There's a difference. I think there's a difference between making it up and bringing something from the plethora of information that we've built up. 
So oh, this no, is I was being completely facetious with that. Absolutely. Uh, no, no I, I mean, I mean, just just to to defend it in in kind of a in a way that I'm, I'm not yeah. being overly defensive, I guess. Just but to kind of to clarify my own thoughts on this, because sometimes I go, "Geez, I just make that up." But actually, I think there's a bit of a justification in kind of going, "Hang on, we've we've a good fucking number of years of experience here, and mm. there's there's yeah. a kind of a background knowledge that when you draw stuff from it." there's an intuition that guides you and that's the kind of internal yeah. voice that is often and that so kind of... where the kind of characterization of Banba Fola and Eru comes from there are a couple of like textual sources for it they are married to McCool, McKecht and McGrania Banba is married to McCool, the son of the hazel uh, which is a wild tree Fola is married to uh, McKecht which means the son of the plough which is agriculture and civilization to me. You're trying to say something, Mar. That was our, sorry. Finish the last one. Yeah, that's 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 what I'm saying. That was that. This is the foundation on which we're building this. And yeah. Fola is married to Macrania, which means the son of the sun. And there is some evidence, ideas, uh, intuitions of people who are you know who study this that that these are pre. These are older gods and goddesses, that these are actually gods and goddesses that predate the Tua de Danon, mm. even though they're amalgamated into the kind of Tua de Danon pantheon, that like these are the primordial triple deities of Ireland, mm -hmm. because you've got the three male, you've got the three female, they're standing in equality, they're, they're you know, they all have their different aspects, but also... Uh, there are there's a Banba in some of the Kesser stories who's a warrior woman. Yes. So that was where I we started going with like, okay, if Banba and McCool are wild and Fola and McKecht are civilized, then Eru and Magrania are transcendent mm. because it's it's the it's the the wild and the tame and the above and the all encompassing. Um, and that's that's where that came and out I, from. I and that was why it was yeah. so interesting to me to me to, to kind of find this this story where like Eru's at Ishnok shape shifting into a crow. And I'm like, of course she fucking is. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's what I mean. Like there's there's joining dots that are kind of intuitively they make sense. And sometimes like, hang on, are we reaching here a bit? But because there's so much that isn't that isn't written sometimes in some sources, you yeah. just get married to McCool McCrone, and you're like, who are they? And so we, we unpacked it and we unpacked it massively for that production. You mentioned This Land, which was a 2018 production uh, in St. Patrick's Day Festival. Uh, or was, no, it was 2019, 19, I think. Um, 2019, with uh, the girls Trish, 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 Trace and Mimi uh, from uh, the Direct Vision Centre in Mosny. And they, I remember so well being up in the, in the room with them and they having we deciding to, to give them characters and we give them many options and mm. there was the morrigan there was a triple a aspect of having the morrigan or what do they what do they feel like going with and because that production was very much based on the kesser story and and this land representing something more than just an island full of irish people but a, an island that is welcoming to all people from all over the world yeah. from all and, parts and of the globe kesser from northern africa and from northern like africa specifically explicitly from northern africa all from africa yeah. and our different parts but um the, this was so this was very much in the the um the knowing of this story and that telling of it came from wanting to give them a grounding in it and mm. then workshopping with them the walk the style the laugh the, and they really took it on mm. in that kind of performance and like they're they're kind of african dancing to some of the music that Farrell was playing and you rue and wood Ushin were like giving them the groove to, to to have their own spoken word poetry as well it was just really interesting to see them come alive into like big characters that again were bigger than them bigger than what we imagined and yet they were well able to step into it because it's in the ether. Those types of things have been there for a long time. And oh, yeah. when, you, when you kind of resurrect them, I think you kind of, you get that sense well, of, of you're, ancient. You're pulling up, you know, this is kind of going back to the whole idea of archetype and you're pulling up kind of structures that are in human consciousness. And I think, you know, for me, these, these are aspects of femininity that are very, you know, powerful. Because this, mm. this, you know, the archetype of the wild woman and the woman who, you know, 
woman who runs with the wolves and the woman who who's fierce and savage and like unfeminine and like you know the Atalanta character in Greek mythology who races faster than the men like these are these are archetypes that you see in world cultures and then you got the the sort of quintessential feminine archetype of like this refined beautiful civilized you know Fola type character who's who's another side of femininity and they're not at odds with each other they're sisters they're twinned they're they're reflections of each other and then you have the Eru um which I think is also you know this is this is the archetype of transcendence which I think can be male and female and both and neither all at the same time because it's it's getting to that stage where ideas about gender become less personalized and you're less identified with those ideas and those constructs and those things start to fall away and that's why she's linked with sun and that's why she's linked with shape-shifting and that's why she's linked with ishnuk because you're into that space then where you're it's, it's becoming more than mm-hmm. um so th- that's that's the the i i fully made up the thing at the end though where i said that uh Fola has been used by those who would invoke Ireland to culture and Banba has been used by those who would invoke Ireland to war. That's not true. <laughs> well, yeah. I even, mean, but even then it's... you're you're kind of drawn from that that yeah. that well, that like that that well of kind of substance yeah. that's that's running beneath these things to a totally. degree. I, like I you're, think you're, they you're, should you're start. Just, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. And from that day onwards, people invoked Fola yeah. for things well, because because it was interestingly enough, it was during the during the um, during the period of British rule in Ireland, uh, and especially when there were kind of all kinds of penal laws and people were trying to you know suppress Irish people from talking about revolution or talking about freedom or talking about Ireland as its own nation. Uh, that was when people used Banba and Fola as code words to talk about Ireland Mm -hmm. and they would refer to Ireland as a woman. And that was the name that they often gave the land because it was a, it was a secret, secret code name. It was not written down anywhere. So it was like, you know, they, that has, they have definitely been used. It was kind of a poetic tradition to use the Mm -hmm. three of them. And then it became secret code words, which is cool as hell to be like cool. here's an ancient Fairness. myth that was a secret code word mm-hmm. for artists and Rue, you know. um, oh, it is beautiful beautiful but again listening to it it's it's again really beautiful for, for you kind of change between the goddesses as, as or how did you feel your way into that yeah it was it was presented in a very simple way in in that like the lads are going through the land and they meet they meet one goddess and they meet a second goddess and then they make a third goddess it's almost like that fairy tale kind of things happening by trees so like immediately what what's needed there musically is just for like one consistent simple like chord progression or whatever for as the foundation and then as as you're going through and meeting further goddesses more and more musical layers get added on so that but by the time you reach Eru, who is who is like posited as being the most significant and powerful of, of the goddesses, it like the, there's you know there's a full string section and everything going on on top, whereas at the start it was just the guitar or whatever. Um, but yeah, just just adding layers. And also there was a, there, there, there was a, there was, this gave me an opportunity for a bit of uh, musical foreshadowing in the episode, because uh, like that, say that as that, that the piece of music that happened during that part, that's like the goddess music. Um, and, and, and that represents Eru or whatever. And then that piece of music comes back during Amergan's invocation of Eru. And that's the only other time you hear it. Mm. Nice. nice it's funny the stuff that goes over my head and I'm still just like oh, <laughs> again like, it should it, it should it shouldn't it like, like I mean if someone were to, to consciously notice these things then you know great or whatever but like it's not it's not it's not really for that it's supposed to be quite subliminal or whatever yeah yeah it is funny when like I guess subliminal is the word because you're you're just tapping into something that will make a listener lean into yeah I don't know what I'm trying to say, but um, a knowing or a recognition or a familiarity because, and you, you see that with music is all the time, you know, like you, there's the same song running through the whole damn thing. And you're like, yeah, oh, by the time you like get the last um, song version of whatever song they're singing, you're like, 
you know it basically by the sure, end of yeah, it because yeah, yeah. it's familiar and it just grows in the in the ear and the uh, the, in the subconscious the and not necessarily the, the the conscious you know i'm sure yeah. randy newman was up to all sorts of deadly little tricks in in marriage story and and like i bet they all worked on you and then you didn't remember <laughs> a thing after <laughs> you know sure didn't sure didn't um, Snaky musician. La- last point to this lads is the two of them and i want to get i kind of want to get both of your opinions on this because uh, it's one that i struggle with a lot and so the two of the Danon are frequently called the kind of the magic people of Ireland and recognized as like the mythic race. And we've talked about this a fair bit, but at the same time, um, they they come to Ireland, they're, a, you know, they, they fight with them. And going back to, through the episodes, they have the battle with the fear bullock. They kind of come in uh, as the first battle, you know, kind of a bit of a dick move with like tra- taking the land. You feel like a bit of pressers. They're there for a while. The second battle, you're very much on their side because Bress has really done them wrong. And you're, you're, the empathy it goes up for the the downcast poor two of the Danon who are magical. And you really feel for them and, and you want them to win. And Lou is the, the shining light and he comes through and saves them. And then you have, <laughs> you have this story where you you kind of, I guess, you're, you're shown a real nasty side to the two of the Danon. And then they disappear and they're in the other world. Um, and, and we don't see them again. We only hear of them as as the she or the people who live 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 yeah. off there. Um, my question is, uh, do we do we have reverence for the two of them? Do we hold them up on a, on on some form of a pedestal where we want to really honor their memory, or do we look at them as somebody that we think history has turned? into a, a hero out of circumstance. What's your opinion? I have many thoughts. Many thoughts. And that's Ru, many you go first. Rugo, you go first. Sorry yeah, you go first. Okay, I'll be here sure. For now. Uh, I, like, yes, I think that idealization is completely there. And um, this is something that, 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 that came up before in the, the, the Clare Island, uh, the, the Bard school that we've gone to and, and like, uh, the the analogy that's kind of put on it is is like to do with historical propaganda and the idea that the hit the, the, the victors are the ones who write history that's what that's what resonates for me with the two of they done and that they, they were a powerful empire and that they had this this kind of zionistic uh, origin story and stuff and and the, and they really sold the shit out of it and and i like i don't i don't personally buy it in the least I, they're 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 powerful they are underhanded um and what i see in this story is like the last days of an ailing empire like you take mm-hmm. you take you take like the roman empire and like all the all 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 the things that they achieved all the technology all the all the whatever but, but like take the last days of the roman empire the the wealth disparity between the rich and the poor has has become insane and 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 the corruption is through the roof and every there's just something there's a rottenness that has grown at the core of it all until it just collapses and it's had its day and it's over i i see a lot of that in in this story with Mm -hmm. regarding the two of them interesting and is this because sorry just don't unpack that answer i guess Mm. is this because if is fundamentally killed for his desire to come and he's basically executed by somebody who sees it, sees that as a threat and the by, following yeah sure by the, like, he's executed for for no good reason by powerful people who have who have been in power for too long and who have been so corrupted and rotted by it that this is the sort of thing that can happen under their leadership now yeah yeah and then the final the final thing which is a nasty move is the yeah, we'll fight you in a few days. And then they send a storm to blow them away, which is just not very honourable. Which not is just pure two they done and at any yeah. point in their arc, they are always point. pulling always that like shit. That. Like, they, they, like they, they, that, was, that, that was before even the, 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 you know, the final days of the Empire kind of buzz said, <laughs> yeah. they're just, they are just like that. They, they've, they've done plenty of that. They're underhanded and pure slime. 100%. All right, sorry, I could take that's, it away. What's, that's, what kind of, that's kind of more where my head went, was like, what, what, what is good? What do you mean by good? Where do we get our ideas of good? And like where good. where we get where we get our idea of honorable and fair play is from the British Empire. Because they don't like guerrilla warfare because it's not fair. Because if you see if you all line up with your muskets, we'll win every single fucking time. Monster. So so running Monster. around and cheating and not playing fair 
that that history was written by the victors. Oh. So I think this I think idea, right? <laughs> you didn't see that coming, did you? Um, I did actually. But... <laughs> you totally did. You one hundred percent did. I'm always did. always defending people being totally fucking underhanded and manipulative. Um, That's why I asked you both because I kind of knew the answer you were going to give. But Carry yeah, on. like. This is where I think the two and Dan are really interesting. But we've talked about this as well. We've talked about this in the context of Fionn McCool. You know, I mean, Oshin's mm-hmm. thing was like, the Fianna know that if you if you didn't want to get stabbed in the back, don't fucking give somebody your back. You know, like, don't, why'd you put yourself in that position? Like, that's you for being an idiot. If Amergen and the Sons of Mill went back over nine waves with their fleet of conquerors, that's on them for being idiots. You're nine waves away from shore. Cool. Have a storm. Chew on that. All right. You beat it. Fair enough. We're fucking off. But like, and also uh, regarding Ith, lovely, sweet, wide-eyed old man Ith talking about this beautiful land. Um, were they wrong? If he Kill had him. gone back home and he had said to his people, this place is fucking paradise. His people who were 40 warlords who were his relatives and friends and sweet old man Ith went back telling them stories about how great this place was. Were they fucking wrong? I don't think they were wrong. Yeah, I don't, wrong, dude. You're just like, a fucking like, asshole. They, <laughs> they, they, they under killed him. They nice. should have killed his son too. Like if it were me. Um, wow. Sorry, that got dark too. <laughs> if it were me, I would kill the son. Quote, it, sir. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the, the, the wrong move here was to not kill them both and finish it before they got on their boat. No, what would um, it? Not morally wrong, just in terms of efficacy, mm. you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 because that's really what we're, we're all looking for, high effectiveness. Um, that, is, that is where I, I kind of sit with this whole idea of like, because if you think about the two of the Dan and you think about the she, yeah. the she are to be respected. Yeah. The she are to be absolutely fucking respected and you don't cross them and you don't insult them because they will fuck you up. And that's the, uh, that is it. I, like that is, there is a straight line from there to the two of the Danon. Yeah. You know, the two of the Danon, they were never, ever cuddly and they were never, ever like, sweet lovely happy-go-lucky people like they came to an island and they burned their ships you know that was that was how they arrived on the scene you know that's that's moment one of the two of the Danon in Ireland and it's not ah oh, sweet Disney princess movement it's fucking hey we're here we're not leaving deal with it yeah. you know like they, yeah, they're yeah, yeah. are they powerful yes are they morally good I don't care what do you mean by good what's morals where do you get them from? Where are they from? Because a lot of it's fucking conditioning. And if you dig back into where that comes from, sometimes it's really uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> that is an excellent answer, Zorgan. I don't think you can find a better talking point to end this discussion on. Uh, you better respect the shit out of the Fae. Uh, yeah. Morality doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Revere them if you want, uh, hate them if you like, but know that if you cross them, you're going to get fucked with. And uh, that's that's the kind of line, and I like it. Um, and I guess before we end, uh, Rue, you, you, you'll you be doing music for uh, this next po- podcast. We're, we're net, not finished just yet. We have one last one coming at you. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that, our next um yeah, I can tell. I can tell you one very decisive thing, and that is that I haven't gone near it yet. <laughs> I'm I still yes. have time on that. Like the the island of Aru hasn't gone out yet, um, as we record this. So uh, yeah, yeah, I haven't gone near that one yet. No, okay, oh, yeah, I'm looking is. forward to it though. I love to the back story. I bet you've done something cool with it. I just don't know yet. <laughs> awesome. I probably should have done my homework there. Be... <laughs> um, Love it. Fantastic. Well, we've we've Fintan and the Hawk of Ackle coming uh, as our last episode of this uh, series. And then we'll be moving on to newer, greener pastures. We'll be doing the, um, yeah, we'll be doing more stuff. We'll also be doing uh, more storytelling courses uh, with the back to school idea. Uh, we've got a, a lot of people actually asking us about our next um, storytelling course, which we ran four of today. Three of. Um, three of, three sorry. Of. 
our fourth uh, storytelling course will be coming very soon, fourth and possibly fifth, because we, we basically already uh, have a big waiting list. So if you do want to get in uh, on that, um, let us know, drop us an email or a DM on Instagram, Facebook, our email, or go to our website to look at the details of yep. our uh, storytelling course, what it entails, how to tell a story, learn about semiotics and the, uh, the undercoverings of the archetypes and mythic traditions of Irish mythology. Um, so you can dig a bit deeper with us when we go back to school. Uh, go to candletales.ie to look at that. Uh, Rue, thank you very much uh, for joining us on this podcast, this special edition episode. And Sarika, I hope you're well. I'll be seeing you guys when I'm home next month. And uh, hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll be limping a lot less. Uh, as you can see, I have a very sore knee. Um, there's my very broken knee. Um, yeah story of that will come to you uh, after the All-Ireland final, uh, which Cork are in, but I don't know if they're going to win, but they beat Kilkenny. That's the most important thing. We beat the fucking cats, lads. We beat the cats. We're very happy. I'm very happy. If you want to know what... Um, what I understood what, all of that. If you want to know how excited I get about sport in general, uh, well, you know, you can listen to some of the podcasts and get a feeling for it. But hurling is the mythic tradition. According to our our fathers, Erica, you, we can't tell... Uh, a myth, a real and rue. You can't tell an Irish myth without understanding hurling. Oh without, yeah. Without feeling the power, because the 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 emotions that went through his body when he was sitting in that stand, the one that went through my body, we the the, the, the the pure and utter heartbreak, the jubilation, the joy. He compared the game of hurling the, uh, from with Cork and Kilkenny last weekend uh, that was played in Crow Park. A, a, to a Seamus Heaney po poem, the fleeting and running of foot over frenzied uh, something. He, he had a great quote. Anyway, um, I just thought it was fantastic. It was I a great first half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I'm bored with that. Like, I'm not, I'm not big into sport, but I, I think hurling is absolutely beautiful, and I can completely get on board with, uh, with, with Tony's bit of poeticism there. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, my dad so, yeah. lacked the poet but the poeticism but he sure had the passion like when <laughs> in, in like in a dublin final he had, or if ireland were playing a big international soccer match or stuff he'd have to literally leave the house and just like deal with it after just let the match run itself out and and like just find out the score and then he could watch it <laughs> oh, wow yeah i mean there's something that just takes over bodily from from again it's a story that we know the ending of but we do not know the t twists and turns of it Absolutely, uh, and it's just playing out right in front of you. And one of the reasons why we love storytelling in a live setting is because that kind of happens as well. And we'll be having some form of a live feeling in our last pitch of the day is the twenty second yes. of September. We'll actually be telling live mm -hmm. stories, and you guys have tasted that recently. But um, <laughs> we'll talk about that a bit more on the next uh, next chance we get. Uh, All we right, really talk about that yet? So. No secrets, <laughs> secrets. secrets. So twenty second of September, we are releasing online tickets for storytelling. What's the name of it again, Erica? Twenty uh, second of September is when it is going to be. We yes. are going to have a show. Tickets will be out a little before then. Uh, we make, are <laughs> yeah, we're going to have a show called Home for the Harvest. That's right. In September. So you can stay home and we will tell you stories. Oh, From yes. a studio, full professional, deadly setup, full, full, full contingent of candlelit tales. It's and gonna be deadly. Special guests, we hope. And special guests, yeah, a lot oh, of yeah. sport acts, right? Have we confirmed sport acts? Are we allowed? We, we, names? we are There's not allowed that. We, oh, there's I, I, oh, there's a rumor. Tell us about the rumor. rumor. There's a rumor that the one, the mighty Tao, will be joining us. Man. But we, we can't say any more than that. Look, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, no, wish, wish, wish. Total, wish, total only, rumors, total yeah. rumors oh, in here, say. Total but we will, we will be announcing more uh, about that as, as the next little while goes on uh, mm -hmm. between now and September. So, so stay tuned. We are excited. It's going some to be form cool. of a live performance coming at you and getting together for it as well because it's, it's something different happens when we're all together and uh, yeah. so we're looking forward to that i'm looking forward to that looking forward to seeing you guys when i'm back home and uh yeah looking forward to hearing what you guys think it is very long podcast but hope you enjoyed it and, uh, <laughs> thank you guys oh god yeah this has been ages yeah <laughs> Listen, thanks for listening. that's all from us take slan. care slan slan